Thank you, Howard, and welcome to Jazz on My Mind, Coast to Coast. I'm Richard Blackwell. This is the show that is dedicated to jazz lovers around the world. Every Wednesday night at 10 p.m., 7 o'clock Pacific Time, we bring you jazz events from Los Angeles to New York, along with performances and jazz chats with the legends, current and upcoming jazz stars. And get ready, you jazz heads, because tonight we've got another fantastic jazz program. Tonight we're going to have a video performance from that out-of-sight group, Manifest 3. Plus, we're going to have a jazz chat with one of the group members, Mr. Dennis Fortune. Also tonight, from our video vault, we're going to have a jazz chat with broadcast legend Tommy Hawkins, radio personality from KJazz 88.1 out of Long Beach, California. But before we do any of that, let's get the show started with some hot kicking jazz. Coming up, we've got a video performance from trumpeter Mr. Tony Smith. Now, this show was recorded last season on Jazz on My Mind, and it features Dexter Kuntz on keyboards, Charles Beasley on bass, Nelson Mayranth on drums. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Tony Smith on Jazz on My Mind.
Wow, what a stellar performance from Wilmington, Delaware's very own Tony Smith on trumpet, along with Dexter Koontz on keyboards, Charles Beasley on bass, Nelson Mayrath on drums. Tony Smith, great performance. Wow, love that show. Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. Coming up from our video vault, we're going to have a jazz chat with radio personality Tommy Hawkins from 88.1 K-Jazz out of Long Beach, California. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to get your pen and paper because it's time for me to give you this week's jazz events for this week in jazz on the West Coast. And let's begin with Los Angeles. Los Angeles has a happening jazz spot, and it's called NOLA's. Now, NOLA has some great jazz, and there you can get it with a touch of New Orleans. Plus, every Sunday, they have what they call their Champagne Jazz Brunch. For more information, you can call NOLA's at area code 213 and the number 680-3002. And of course, jazz is always happening at the house that Billy Higgins built, the World Stage, located at 4344 Degnan Avenue in LA. The World Stage also has an out-of-sight youth jazz workshop. You can call my good friend Matt Gibson at the World Stage at area code 323 and the number 293-2451. And when you talk about some great jazz, you can't forget about the Catalina Bar and Grill. They've got some great jazz happening seven days a week. The Catalina Bar and Grill is located at 6725 Sunset Boulevard in Hollywood. You can log on to their website, which is thecatalinabarandgrill.com. And for our wonderful viewers in the Midwest area, Cleveland, Ohio has a terrific spot for jazz, and it's called Nighttown. They're located at 12387 Cedar Road in Cleveland, Ohio. You can reach them by calling area code 216 and the number 795-0550. And of course, you can't forget about Chicago. They've got a great jazz club, and it's called the Green Mill Cocktail Lounge. They're located at 4802 North Broadway in Chicago. You can reach them at area code 773, and the number is 878 Five 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 two, And for all of our great fans in St. Louis, Missouri, they've got a wonderful jazz club, and it's called Jazz at the Bistro. They're located at 3536 Washington Avenue in St. Louis. You can log on to their website, which is, it's jazzatthebistro.com. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, for all great jazz events, from Los Angeles to New York, log on to our website, which is jazzonmymind.com. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going into our video vault and check out a tremendous jazz chat I had the pleasure of having. This was recorded in May 2009, and it was recorded at the West LA Music Shop in West Los Angeles. This is going to show you a great interview I had with Mr. Tommy the Hawk Hawkins, a tremendous radio personality from radio station 88.1 out of Long Beach, California, which is KJAZZ. Now, this video means a lot to me because Tommy is one of my great, great favorite friends. So, ladies and gentlemen, here it is, me and the Hawk, Tommy Hawkins on Jazz on my mind. So, Tommy, you were 12 years old when your love for jazz developed, huh? Exactly. When my brother sat me down and told me that <laughs> rhythm and blues was going to rot my teeth. Right. And I need to get into some jazz. And 
he put on Charlie Parker's confirmation mm-hmm. and uh, I didn't want to let him know that he had made an impact on me. <laughs> so I would sneak and listen to Are you serious? the bird yeah, when he wasn't there. But then, you know, I was still in Chicago, there was a DJ by the name of Al Vincent. Uh-huh. He came on in the afternoon and he'd say, you jump here, you jump there, you jump everywhere, so how about jumping with me every afternoon, cats, from 5 to 7 o'clock, and I guarantee you, we'll jump together. Isn't it? <laughs> you remember that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's ingrained. In yeah. And, and then, uh, as a teenager, I started to listen to Stan Getz. They yeah. were on the jukebox yes. then. Yes. You would go to the campus shop mm-hmm. over on Chicago Teachers College and Parker High School, mm-hmm. put your money in there, hear Cool Mix and Rustic Hop. And then, <laughs> and then Horace Silver did Ooh. a thing called right. Six Pieces of Silver. Wow my favorite jazz album and on that was senior blues mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. oh lord you mentioned horace silver i had the pleasure of meeting horace silver back in maybe 1979 and not only an outstanding musician but what an individual as well oh yeah fantastic man very right. humble very low-key you would never believe that this same gentleman had that musical talent if you met him in person because he's such a humble person oh yeah yeah beautiful he did. and he he'd come in and he was so engrossed in his piano mm-hmm. and he had that wide leg sitting yes. stance yes. and yes. it looked like he, <laughs> either the piano was gonna suck him up or he was gonna <laughs> suck up the piano and he just he just freak everybody out. Now, something. now we mentioned uh, a radio station that we both listened to in Chicago, the Gloria WVON, which had one of your radio mentors, Sid McCoy. Sid McCoy. Now let's talk about a little about Sid McCoy and how he influenced. You. Well, Sid McCoy had a show at midnight, and he'd come on, and he'd say, "Hey, hey, old bean, and you too, baby." And I'd say, "Oh man, this dude, he is." Cool, cool. <laughs> I, I didn't want to be like Mike. I want to be like Sid. There you go. Right. And uh, I started listening to him. And I thought, one day, I want to be a jazz DJ. Yes, yes. But, you see, basketball got in the way. Yes. And uh, so, finally, out here, when I was in broadcasting and doing television and radio and sports and all of this stuff, mm-hmm. Um, KKGO and Saul Levine asked mm-hmm. me if I would like to, he says, I know of your love for jazz, I know of your collection and everything, mm-hmm. and I'm wondering if you want to do a weekend show for me. Wow. So in addition to the television and the sports and everything else, mm-hmm. I started doing Saturdays from 9 until 1 for Saul Levine mm-hmm. at... Uh, KKGO, right. all, 105.1 FM, all jazz all the time. There you go. Right. And uh, it's in my blood. Yeah. It's in my blood. Yeah. Now, being from Chicago, yeah. going to Parker High School. Yes, sir. From there, you went to Notre Dame. Yes, I did. And you played basketball for Notre Dame. Right. In fact, you were so good. I, just, I think you scored 40, 49 points against the Air Force Academy. I, I don't remember, 40 something. Yeah you, yeah, you got a lot of recognition for that. You were one of the first Afro American ball players in college to get that much play publicity behind a game when you scored those, I think it was 46 points. Well, I don't. I, I know it was over 40. Yeah. And yeah. anything over 40, I accept. <laughs> So, so anyhow, I was a two-year All-American at Notre Dame, was yeah, a Lakers' first-round draft choice. In and, 1959, I believe yeah, it was. Right. Yeah, and was living a boyhood dream. Yes. Uh, one, played trumpet in the concert band in high school. Did you? And wanted to be another Clifford Brown. Yes. Right? Yes. But uh, when I got to Notre Dame, I couldn't handle basketball, the books, mm. and, and the trumpet, too. And I was hanging out with uh, guitarist Gene Bergensini, mm-hmm. who was head of the dance band at Notre Dame. Mm-hmm. And Gene was encouraging me to stay with my trumpet and everything, but I just couldn't do it. Just yeah. couldn't do it. Now, going on to the Los Angeles, well, it was the Minneapolis. Lakers when you were signed, exactly. That's right. And you had a wonderful 10-year career in the National Basketball Association. 6,000 points, 
four thousand rebounds. I mean, yeah, that's that's. Well, that's yeah, well, you know, I wasn't the star in pro ball that I. I'm, I mean. Uh, yeah, in pro ball that I was in college, I didn't score as many, but I was playing a different game. I had different to learn role. to play yes. forward. Yes. I had played center at 6'5", because yes. I had a 42-inch vertical leap. Right, right. And then I had to learn how to play forward, but I was a defensive player. Yes, so from right. offense, I became a defensive player, rebounder, mm -hmm. floor execution and everything, mm -hmm. and I was a great I was like a, like a batting A. <laughs> yes. Today, that, a bad A with the Houston Rockets. That's the role that I played with the Lakers and the old Cincinnati Warriors. Yes, I was, yes, with right. Cincinnati as well. Right. But that's wonderful. And then from there, you went on and started your broadcasting career. Yes. Uh, After the, 10 years. Yes. Um, 31 years old, getting into broadcasting. Yes. Who are we? <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying to yeah. myself, you, you're a little old to get started in this, but I went to Channel 4 right away, became a sportscaster, network and local, mm -hmm. was the first athlete to ever be given a talk show, five days a week, mm -hmm. two hours a day, and that had nothing to do with sports. You also received and, a golden mic. Yeah, with with uh, Channel Four, yes. with the Jess Marlow Five O'clock team. I remember Jess. Yeah, I did. So I I got to do a lot of things, and if it was available, I try to do it mm -hmm. because that was <laughs> that's the nature that's of what it's about. <laughs> Exactly, and um, I've been very successful. I've never worked for a station or a show that didn't have ratings. Mm -hmm. There you go. Right now we know you did the mid morning. Los Angeles. Los Angeles show on Channel 9, your yeah. HJ. Right. Uh, you went on and started working with the Dodgers as vice president in charge of communications for yeah. Los Angeles Dodgers right. baseball team. And that encompassed a lot. You created the, the Dodger Forecast show. Yes, Dodger Forecast, Dodger Confidential. That's right. Uh, baseball Spotlight. That's right. Did did sports star. I was sports director for KBC Radio right. Right. and uh, just had a ball and do I <laughs> love the diversity. I'd walk here all week and get on a plane and go and do college basketball for NBC on the weekends. That's right, you were yeah. with Kyle Gow uh, Kirk Gowdy. That's right. And uh, Jim Simpson. Man, you did your homework. Two, <laughs> two, two legends and, and you. I mean, that's incredible. And I was one of the first breaking in as a regular, and it wasn't easy because yeah. they didn't, you know, like now, you're, you're an actual athlete, yeah. ESPN, come yeah. on in, we'd love to have you, here's a new suit, you know, <laughs> whatever yeah. you need. Right. Then, they didn't, ah, oh, wait a minute, you haven't paid your dues as a broadcaster, and you're coming in and taking a job, no, we don't want that, so you had to, you had to earn your dues. Mm -hmm. You had to pay your dues mm -hmm. and you had to prove to them that you could be a part of their fraternity. At that time, tell me if I can interject, athletes were not so much welcomed to be sportscasters. No. You had to be a seasoned sportscaster. You had to be a Howard Cosell, a Kirk Gow, a Jim Simpson in order to break through that broadcasting arena and you were able to do that. Well, I tell you, I was able to do it because people gained confidence in me as we went along. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Kurt gained confidence, gave me more mm -hmm. space and more time, as did Jim Simpson mm -hmm. and all of those things. Mm -hmm. And they gave me the opportunity to put together special packages and all of those things. That's beautiful. And, uh, it was a first. Mm -hmm. It was a first. It had had, hadn't happened before. There I was again, Mr. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Pioneer. <laughs> Excuse me, is there space for me? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and there always has been. That's the most beautiful thing. Right, right. Now, jazz, I mean, listening to you on K Jazz, yeah. in the 8.1 every Saturday morning, that is such a blessing because when you're on the air, you're playing things. You're playing not only artists who are big and well known, but you're playing artists that you know personally, mm -hmm. people that you have spent time with, oh, yeah. and, and and know them and their music. Oh yeah. Who who are some of your favorites that you really enjoy playing? Uh, 
Ted Cannonball Adderley, for course, example. Of course. Uh, I hung out with Cannonball and Matt mm -hmm. so many places, so many times. When Cannonball and Matt went to Chicago, mm -hmm. they went to my mom's house for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. You know, yeah. uh, I've known Herbie Hancock since he was 15 years old. Mm -hmm. Keep going, come right. on. All right, you, you want? I want some you, more. You say you want more? I want more. I'm going to give you more. <laughs> All right. Uh, Ramsey Lewis, a teenage jazz star at Stelzer's Lounge on 39th and South Park. Wow. And, and we we honored him, you know, like I was a man in basketball. I was a city's leading scorer. Mm -hmm. But hey. Forget about that. Ramsey's playing. I got. <laughs> I got to get in to catch Ramsey, L.D. Young, and Red Holt. That oh. was the Ramsey Lewis trio. And then they formulated the Red. I'm sorry, the Young Holt. It, exactly. Uh, unlimited with soulful strut, which is you can hear that at any time on the radio now. Exactly. Exactly. Wow. That's, that's really marvelous. So uh, you know, uh, Freddie Hubbard. Yes. I uh, hung out with Freddie Hubbard. One of the people that I hung out with was one of the most unusual people I've ever met uh, in my life, mm -hmm. and that's Rashawn Roland Kirk. Whoa. Oh man. God. My dad has told me a lot, and I've heard a lot of Mr. Kirk's music. What was your impression of Mr. Kirk? Well, as mm -hmm. an activist, mm -hmm. a space cadet, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he'd, he'd explore the universe, man. Right, right. But I have to tell you this story. I'll tell it very quickly. Please, tell us. Roland, before he added the Raja, said to me one night, we were at... We were at 53rd and Broadway mm -hmm. in a little cafe having breakfast after uh, a stint at Birdland. Mm -hmm. And he said, Huh, next time you're in town, I want to come and see a game. I said, What are you going to come and see a game for? You're a blind man. Mm -hmm. You can't see mm -hmm. the game. He says, Here's how I want to see it. I want to be escorted by three of the loveliest women you can find. Mm -hmm. And I want to walk in with them on my arm and come to my seats on the floor to watch the game. Mm -hmm. And they will tell me what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> so let me tell you something very quickly. Roland, we're warming up Tuesday night, Madison Square Garden. Right. And all of a sudden, you hear this buzz. An unusual buzz. The warm-up crowd don't usually have that kind of buzz. Right. I wonder what was happening. Here comes Roland down the aisle with his white cane uh -huh. and these three lovelies. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, Hawk. He said, Hawk, you should have seen it. I said, no, Roland. You should have seen it. <laughs> Tommy, that's quite a story. I'm glad you had a chance to convey that to Jazz of my mind. Now, Tom, before you go, you're currently on KJazz. Yes. 88.1. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, this man, if you listen to his radio show, not only will you hear the best jazz in the land, but he will tell you many stories to go along with the musicians. So you're on. Give us the times and the frequency again. So okay, it's 88.1 FM. Right. K Jazz, Jazz and Blues all the time. 365 days a year, mm -hmm. seven days a week. And, and uh, the times that you're on. Huh? I am on Saturdays from nine until noon, mm -hmm. and I am Bubba Jackson's <laughs> worst nightmare. <laughs> He, he, Bubba wants to be like Hawk. That's another good struggles. friend to jazz on my mind is the great Bubba Jackson. And I know about you too and how close you guys are. Well, we're tight, but we're competitive. Very much so. It's like basketball one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> Bubba, bring it on. <laughs> well, Tommy, I want to thank you very much. This hey. has been an extreme pleasure. I don't know how we've been able to, kept to cover you in 30 minutes. So I'm going to definitely leave an invitation open for you to return back and we can spend some more time with you with Jazz and Mama. Whenever you want to, I'd love to. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, The Hawk, Tommy Hawkins. I'm Richard Blackwell. And thank you for watching Jazz on My Mind.
Wow, ladies and gentlemen, what a tremendous time I had with Tommy Hawkins doing that interview. <laughs> there you have it, folks. Broadcast legend and basketball great Tommy Hawkins from 88.1 KJazz out of Long Beach, California. Coming up next, our in-studio st in guest, Mr. Dennis Fortune from the group Manifest 3. Also coming up, we're going to feature two video performances from that outstanding group, Manifest 3, that was recorded here in Wilmington, Delaware in August of this year. That's coming up next. But first, ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you about an outstanding restaurant that is here in this wonderful jazz town of Wilmington, Delaware. And the restaurant is called The Paradise Palms. Now, I want to tell you about it because they feature the best Caribbean food in the world. The world is so, the food is so great because the head chef, Mr. Window, prepares all his food with the love of Jamaica. Dishes like jerk chicken, baked fish, red beans and rice, cabbage, greens, and so much more. So the next time your taste buds say Caribbean, you got to come down to the Paradise Palms, located at 901 North King in Wilmington, Delaware. This is where we do our show every Wednesday night. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, for the best Caribbean food in the world, you got to come to 901 North King in Wilmington, Delaware. It's called the Paradise Palms. You can reach him by phone at area code 302 and the number 377-2528. Or be sure to log on to the website, which is theparadisepalms.com. Now, everyone, I want you to put your hands together and let's welcome the legendary musician and group member from Manifest 3, Mr. Dennis Fortune, to Jazz on My Mind. Dennis, welcome to the show. Thanks a lot, Richard. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> you know, you were watching that interview with Tommy Hawkins. What did you think of that? You know, I never, I heard you mention his name, but I never realized it was the same Tommy Hawkins that was the basketball player. Yeah, he used to play I, with I, the Lakers. I too. never realized that. <laughs> so I learned something right there. Yeah, we had a great time. And Dennis, we, you and I always have a great time together. You've been on the show before. It's always a pleasure to have you on because when we sit down together, we always talk some great jazz. We let the people know what's happening in the world of jazz. But today, I want to talk about your group, this new group that you have called Manifest 3. And it's comprised of you and some other outstanding musicians. You want to tell the audience who else comprises Manifest 3? Uh, we have on bass, um, Michael Cruz. On drums, Harry Butch Reed. Mm -hmm. And on guitar, the guitar, Gerald Twig, nicknamed Twig Smith. <laughs> And you gentlemen are some outstanding musicians. Um, since we've been doing some things with Manifest 3, in fact, you opened for the Clifford Brown Jazz Festival this past uh, year. That had to be a big thrill for your group. It was. It was nice to be able to, since we are a new group, yeah. to be able to start on such a level. That was that was really cool. Pretty cool. Really cool. Yeah. Now let's talk about Dennis Fortune. You've been on the show before, but uh, for some of the audience who are getting acclimated to you, Let's talk about your career. You're a keyboardist, great, great keyboardist. When did you begin playing the keyboard? I was a little boy. My mom was a piano teacher, mm -hmm. so she taught all the kids in the neighborhood, and, and I used to have to go upstairs and be quiet. <laughs> you know, I hated that, man. It's my mom, you know, so yeah. I, would, I would come and, Mom, show me this, show me that, Mommy, 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 and I just took to it. Yeah. And I was about five, you know, yeah. six. My first public performance was in first grade. I played an assembly. Mm -hmm. Little drummer boy, I remember it well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was petrified. <laughs> but that was the first time. And then my, my mother was, she was pretty well established in the city. Mm -hmm. And she played at a lot of events. Mm -hmm. And she'd always drag me along and I'd have to, to play. And, uh, <laughs> but I mean, it was a good experience. So yeah. I, I don't, I, you know, she was always my, my greatest supporter. Well, it, it helped you become the great musician that you are today. And I hope you don't mind me saying great. I've seen you perform on many venues, many situations. You, you are outstanding. Well, you know, it, it's an interesting 
situation because, you know, I appreciate that. I appreciate the compliment. Mm -hmm. But I'm also aware of, of some of the greats, the giants mm -hmm. who have come before me, who are, who are even out here now. Mm -hmm. So I'm humbled by that. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, but then as a musician, you have to get to the point you say, well, let me do what I do. Right. And let me be the best at being me. Right. And that helps you get through because, I mean, I, 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 I can listen to, to some CDs or some records and it's like, I might I have to listen to somebody else play. It's like, <laughs> what am I doing? You yeah, know? Yeah. But you realize music is bigger than that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's more about touching people, communicating to people. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it, making music is, a, is, is more than just ability. It's, it's a feeling. It's an emotion. And you try to touch, touch people that way. Mm -hmm. And I've been told I'm able to do that. So yes, you I'm, are. I'm happy with that. I've been in the audience at several of your performances and you do a marvelous job. Right. Now, where did you get your formal training? I know your mom. Right, and she was, was a mentor. Right. She and she was a piano teacher. She was a, mm -hmm. you know, so she taught me all the correct stuff. Mm -hmm. and then I went to uh, Dickinson College. Mm -hmm. And I was a I double majored in sociology and music. So I studied it, you know, I got a degree in music at Dickinson. Mm -hmm. And I've always been a student of the music. So after that, you know, you just start playing and you're playing in bands. I used to play with a lot of the Philadelphia groups and mm -hmm. travel around and all. But I've always been interested in jazz, even as a little boy. I, mm -hmm. I was really young. My sister had uh, Point Sienna, uh, Ahmad Jamal's version of Point And I used to just listen wow, to it over man. and over what a piece. and over. Yeah. Then my mom, I finally convinced her to buy me the music. <laughs> So I sat there and I could read. I said, how come it didn't sound like that? <laughs> you know, I had no clue about what was going on. So yeah. it was a process. But I've always been drawn to, to improvisation and you know, turning things around and harmonies and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So, and then, you know, I, I, I had some good teachers when I get, uh, started playing out. Because mm -hmm. in those days... Music wasn't in schools. Jazz wasn't in colleges like it's in right. every every college has a jazz mm -hmm. program. Back then they didn't. So mm -hmm. you learn from being around people who were more skilled than you were. There you, go. you know, they would take you under their wing. If they saw you were serious, they would say, Okay, come on son, right. let me show you this, let me show you that. Right. That's how you learn. And that's a blessing. Oh, absolutely. It's a blessing. Because they would teach you more than just the notes. They would yeah. teach you about life. How to be a musician and all, you know, all these other things. How to entertain an audience. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you find some, some, some of the younger musicians, they don't have the skill of being able to pull an audience in. Right. They may play well, but that's mm -hmm. part of, it's all, it's still showbiz no matter how you, 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 you twist it. You have to. And you learn that, you know, mm -hmm. being around people that mentor you and you can see them and see, wow, you know, mm -hmm. they're saying, they say that same corny joke. <laughs> Why do they say it? Well, the people <laughs> laugh, and then the people are in, and then they, they can play whatever they want. Yeah. Speaking of uh, you learning from people, you also are now an instructor. How, how is it teaching others now your craft? I don't know. I, 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 um, I've always been a teacher, mm -hmm. even when I was younger. I, I don't want to get too deep, but I remember when I was in high school and we were reading Plato and all of that, mm -hmm. and Socrates, you know, was was Plato's teacher, and he would always never answer. Mm -hmm. If Plato asked him a question, he would ask him another question, and that always intrigued me. And let let letting the student find the answer for themselves, mm -hmm. and so that's the the technique that I try to do. I'm always asking my students, well, what about this? Well, why did why is this like that? Why is that like this? Mm -hmm. And I enjoy that. Mm -hmm. You know, so luckily I found that as a, a, a piece of my lifestyle right. that I really do enjoy. I think that's beautiful. Now, I'm glad you can be on today because we've been wanting to feature Manifest 3, which is your new group. But prior to Manifest 3, you had another group, and it was called FVC. Tell us a little bit about FVC. Well, it started out in the in the early 90s. Uh, we were playing at a club in uh, Philadelphia called Zanzibar Blue. Now, where are you from, Dennis? You I'm from Philadelphia. Okay. Yeah, I'm from mm -hmm. Philadelphia. I've been here for a long time. In Wilmington, Delaware. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, it started out as the Dennis Fortune Trio mm -hmm. with Michael Cruz mm -hmm. and Pete Vincent. Right. Well, we kept going and going, and then it said, okay, let's become 
Fortune, Vincent Cruz. Okay. And so that's what we were for a lot of years, for right. a long time. Right. Until uh, about four years ago, our drummer, Pete Vincent, passed away. And right. That changed a lot of, a lot of things. Right. So. It's got to be, um, the music that you play has got to be dear to your heart. Because your music, I'm telling you, and you, com you compose a lot of the tunes. And in fact, we're going to see a video clip that Manifest 3 performed at the Christina Cultural Arts Center here in Wilmington, Delaware, back in August of this year. So set this up. It's the song, I believe, is called The Mix. Talk about that, and we're going to show that video. Okay. It, I, I wrote that in the mid-'90s, around 96, 95, 96. And I really originally composed it as, as more of a contemporary kind of a song. Okay. But then over time, it was like, ah, let's swing it. Yeah. <laughs> so we started swinging it, and, and it, it just felt much better that way. I love it, too, and I think the audience will as well. So let's check a look at it, okay? okay. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are. Per recorded live here in Wilmington, Delaware in August 2011. Here is Dennis Fortune with Manifest 3 on Jazz on My Mind.
Thank you. Performance. Thank you. Man, I'm fun. telling you, I we was in the audience that night. <laughs> I heard you. I heard you. <laughs> in fact, I think I, int I introduced you guys. Yes, you did. Wow. A very nice introduction, too. Thank you. I was wondering, who was he talking about? <laughs> oh, that's us. <laughs> now, on saxophone, wonderful, wonderful young lady. Talk about. Yeah, Lynn Riley. Lynn and I go way back. We, yeah. we, we started, we had a band in the early 80s called Catch-22. Wow, she's and, great. Yeah, she's, she's really she's, good. She's a solid musician all the way around. Yeah. yeah. And that song again was called The Mix? The Mix. All the right. Mix. Well, we're going to check out some other stuff. Another video that was shot that night at the Christina Cultural Arts Center. That's going to be coming up in a couple of seconds. You going to stick around? Uh, absolutely. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Dennis Fortune on Jazz on My Mind. We're going to be right back. But first, it's time for you to get that pen and paper because I want to give you this week's jazz events for this week in jazz on the East Coast. And let's begin with tomorrow night. You know, each and every Thursday night, ladies and gentlemen, we have the Thursday night jazz party at Basil Bar and Grill, located right here in Wilmington, Delaware, the jazz capital of the world. Now, each and every Thursday night, you can join us at 422 Delaware Avenue as we present some jamming hot live music. Now this Thursday, the music will be supplied by G2. And the night, of course, is hosted by yours truly. The music begins at 8 o'clock, and we invite each and every one of you, if you're in the tri-state area, come on to Wilmington, Delaware, to Basil Bar and Grill, and check out G2 tomorrow night. Also, ladies and gentlemen, jazz at its finest happens at the Nomad Jazz Bar, located at 905 North Orange, right here in, once again, in Wilmington, Delaware. For more jazz events and jazz times, you can check out the Nomad by calling area code 302, and the number is 655-8800. The Nomad is the hottest new jazz club on the East Coast, and we invite each and every one of you to come every Friday and Saturday night, The Nomad. Also, ladies and gentlemen, each and every Sunday, it's the world-famous Jazz Brunch at Warm Daddy's, located at 1400 Columbus Avenue in Philadelphia. 
The food at Warm Daddy's is always delicious, and the music is out of sight. Once again, that's Warm Daddy's. You can check them out by calling area code 215, and the number is 462-2000. And the city of Atlanta has a hot jazz spot called Cafe 290. Every Sunday, they have what they call an all-star jazz jam session. For more jazz info, you can call Cafe 290 at area code 404 and the number 256-3942. And when you talk about jazz, you can't forget about the Big Apple. They've got a spot called the Town Hall Jazz Club, located at 131 West 3rd in New York. Reach them at area code 212 and the number 475-8952. Once again, it's the Town Hall Jazz Club. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, once again, for all great jazz events from Los Angeles to New York, just log on to the website, which is jazzonmymind.com. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to welcome back my good friend, Dennis Fortune, who's here as our in-studio guest. And we're featuring Dennis's group, which is called Manifest 3. Now, the show that we're watching, which was taped in August of this year, was actually your coming out. Is that correct? Right. Just one little correction. It was May. But that's okay. May? But that's okay. Well, that's, I mean, okay. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. And yeah. I was there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, how time for well, I tell you. <laughs> yeah, that was our first uh, concert. It was our first first performance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you guys did a marvelous job. Now, we're going to see another song, another performance from that particular night in May. And once again, give us the names of the musicians who are performing with Manifestly. Who are you again? Okay, on bass, we have Michael Cruz. Drums, Harry Butch Reed. Mm -hmm. Guitar, Gerald Twig Smith. And on saxophone, Lynn Riley. And of course, Dennis Fortune on keyboards. Ladies and gentlemen, here's another video clip from Manifest 3 on Jazz on My Mind.
Dennis, I tell you, now I love that song. I wonder why. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you probably hear that song every week here on Jazz On My Mind when we do the jazz events from coast to coast. And the name of that song is... Blackwell. And that's the song I'm telling you. When we were in the audience and you said, I want to dedicate this, and this song is for Richard and Charlene, his wife. Man, I'm telling you, it almost brought me to tears. That's like giving you flowers while you're still alive to smell them. And I really thank you and, and Cruz and uh, Butch and, and Twig and the group, everyone, for, for that dedication. Thank you. It was our pleasure. How did you come up with that song? Long story. <laughs> we, don't, we don't have enough time. We'll come back for another right. show. Another show. Another show. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, once again, the group is called Manifest 3. If you want to see more of Manifest 3, log on to their website, which is manifest3.com. You can also see more of their stuff on YouTube. Go to their YouTube channel, which is Manifest 3, and um, check them out. Outstanding group. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thanks for having me. Hey, Jen, this is my pleasure. Definitely. Don't Thank go anywhere. Stay, with, stay right there for me. Ladies and gentlemen, you think this week's show was great. Wait till you see next week's show. Next week, we're going to feature a live performance from vocalist Kitty Mayo. Plus, from the third Sunday jazz series, we're going to have Brenda Smith. She's going to talk about what's coming up this coming 2012 at the Crystal Center. That's where we have our third Sunday jazz brunch every third Sunday of the month. And also joining us from radio station WVUD, which is 91.3 FM out of Wilmington, Delaware, radio personality Steve Leach will be back with us next week. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, for more jazz entertainment, check out our jazz website, which is jazzonmymind.com. Log on and become a member to the jazz site as we do our part in keeping jazz alive. I'd like to thank the crew tonight. I'd like to thank my man Vincent Atkins, our audio director. I'd like to thank our director, Bernard Parker, and the rest of the crew. And, of course, I want to thank you for watching. And, Dennis. Thank you for joining me, Thanks my for man. Having me. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Dennis Fortune. I'm Richard Blackwell. And as usual, we want to thank you for watching Jazz on, on My Mind. mind.